if we're going to do an honest job troubleshooting the E string and evaluating whether or not students can create good tone on the E string, we have to stop doing things to mask problems that could occur on the E string. For instance, we have to allow students to play open E's, like if, especially if the tetrachord lines up for it where we're going to have an open E in that finger pattern. Okay, we, we can't have students shifting on the A string to avoid playing on the E string just to make a better quality tone during the troubleshooting process. Now, I'm not saying that it, you know, if it's before a contest and you don't think you can get that tone there in time and, and you have to have them shift or you have to have them play fourth finger, whatever, that, that might be the best thing to do for, for a temporary solution. But if you're looking for a permanent solution, if you're looking to troubleshoot and figure that out, then you're going to have to let your students play on the E string, all your violins play on the E string, and you're going to have to let them play open E's. In my experience, most of the E string issues can be cured through fixing the setup for the students. So you definitely want to inspect their setups. And again, because of the teaching that we do where everybody's in the classroom at the same time and the method book's not covering the E string, the students are allowed to play with a setup in which they don't really have to have access to the E string and they can get away with some they can get away with you know playing with that setup on the A string on, on the D string on the G string but on on the E string if they're to have the proper bowing angle maybe the instrument's not at the right angle so if their bow's at the right angle they end up playing on the on the C bout instead of on the string or maybe the way they're sitting in their chair, their legs in the way, and so they end up either hitting their leg, so they use less bow, or they bow around the leg, or something like that, and that's what creates the problem. So the first troubleshooting step is to inspect the setup of the student and make sure that the instrument it, it comes down onto the shoulder as at the, at the correct angle, and then we turn the head, and then the nose points to the scroll. Now, when a student, let's say the student, uh, they're used to having a violin that kind of comes down here, which is common among beginners too, because of the way their stands are situated. Uh, they want to be able to see their, their fingers. They want to see if they're on the tapes. They want to be able to see their music. They want to be able to see their teacher, but they're sitting in these like block formations so that the teacher can walk around. And so all of these things aren't in alignment. So what tends to happen is they have the instrument over here, and then over time it kind of comes over here so they can see the fingers the music, the teacher, and we have to get the, the violin up at the correct angle again. This could be very uncomfortable for a lot of students. They might feel some strange pressure because of the way that their shoulder rest has been oriented to, to fit here down by the collarbone instead of up onto the shoulder. Um, I, I don't know of a device called a, a collarbone rest, so we, we definitely need to get the shoulder rest, the upper part of the shoulder rest, up onto the shoulder. And if the shoulder rest isn't in the right position, they might feel pinched, they might feel uncomfortable here, they might feel some discomfort on, on the chin where their chin rest should be. And, and that's another thing to watch for as an aside. Make sure their chins are on the chin rest and, and not on the tail gut because I see that a lot of times too, that they're just out of position. So when they're changing their technique, definitely ask them, say, does this feel comfortable? And if not, you might need to adjust the feet of the shoulder rest, and, and, and particularly the, the lower end of the shoulder rest that comes down here, that foot probably will need to be extended a little bit so that they can get the right angle created and feel comfortable doing that. And if they're gonna, if they feel comfortable doing it, they're likely to keep that position, but if we don't make the adjustments with the shoulder rest and we don't have their chin come up to the chin rest, they're, they're gonna feel pain, they're gonna feel discomfort, and then they're gonna go right back to that less than optimal technique and that's really going to hurt the quality of the the E string so great troubleshooting step check the setup and fix the setup so that they're comfortable and that they can access the E string with a straight bow path if you look at the student strings you know you look at the A string the D string the G string you look really closely at it you can see the winding that goes around the string you look at the E string you won't see any so the string is constructed differently than the other three and, and for this reason, what we need to do is change the way we bow on the E string as opposed to the other strings. We talk a lot about creating grip and grabbing the string and using our bow weight appropriately to get good tone on the other strings. But for the E string, it's a little different. Yes, we need to activate the string, but we need less activation force through the pressure of the bow, and we need much more activation speed. 
So one thing that we need to do when we're troubleshooting is look at our players and, and figure out are they using enough bow speed or are they, using enough, are they using too much pressure on the strings. We have to manage our bow weight with our bow speed and there are some exercises that we can do to play some open A's and play some open E's so that they play heavier on the A string and then when they cross they play lighter and faster on the E string just to manage the differences in bow technique between those two. When we make these changes in technique, these are going to be incremental improvements. The students are not likely to make that change instantly and just retain that technique forever. It's something that you have to reteach and reteach day after day. Now, the bow speed and the setup can go hand in hand because if their access to the upper half of the bow is being blocked by the leg when they bow down, that's going to be a big problem. That's going to reduce the amount of bow they have to work with. and Therefore, they have less bow speed. And so sometimes the pose, when you fix the setup issues and now they have access to the upper half, okay, now are they playing in the upper half? Because a lot of them are just going to be used to stopping here because that's where their leg was. We also need to inspect the left hand shape and the left hand position because, again, the students aren't used to playing on the E string as much. That's just not the way that they're taught through homogenous instruction. So what we need to do is make sure that the wrist is straight make sure that they're tucking the fingers, make sure that the shoulder is rotating so that they can access the E-string by shoulder rotation and not with the wrist. We see this, you know, we see straight wrist fine on the, on the A-string, D-string, G-string, great, but then we go on the E-string and uh, now we end up with that pizza hand or whatever you call this where, you know, maybe we're serving drinks or something at a party when we actually should be playing the violin. When you start increasing the bow speed, if you still end up having problems, also inspect the bow path. Make sure the bow is straight. Because a lot of times what starts happening is that the students will start bowing around the right leg. And if their right leg's out of position, if they don't drop the knee down, or if they don't bow on the inside of the right leg by moving the right leg out of the way, or let's say that there's uh, their violin case is in the way and their leg is right in the bow path. And so you might want to remove that case or put the case underneath the chair or something to where their right foot can be in the right position on the outside of the right chair leg. Look for those three things, the problems with the setup, the amount of bow speed that the students are using, and the bow path to make sure the bow path is straight. If you troubleshoot with those three things, you can solve an awful lot of problems just there.